Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do a little bit of a different sort of video for you guys. I am going to bake three fall recipes that I think we are going to love and I have a feeling you guys and your families will love as well. So we are going to start with my absolute favorite fall dessert, which is apple crisp. And this is my grandma's recipe, and it does not require oats, which I know most apple crisp and, and peach crisp and any kind of crisp recipe, recipes usually do. This one is a little bit different, and I absolutely love it. It is delicious. So if you're looking for something maybe a little different, definitely try that one out. After that, we're going to give a brand new recipe a try and they are for pumpkin snickerdoodle muffins. My husband and I are both really, really excited. Anything pumpkin, I really do like, but I love snickerdoodle cookies and so does my husband. So we're gonna give those a try. And then finally, we are going to make what are called indoor s'mores. And they are a really good recipe that you can take and share with others. They're kind of little bars and they taste just like a s'more. I will make sure to leave all of these recipes in the description box below. And if you guys like this kind of video, please let me know in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up so that I know to make more videos just like this. So let's get started baking. your apple crisp, you'll need sugar, flour, cinnamon, melted butter, and about eight apples. Peel and thinly slice your apples and then add them to your 9 by 13 baking dish that has been coated with non-stick cooking spray. have my apples all sliced up and in this pan this is a 9 by 13 pan and now I'm going to mix together my topping to sprinkle over the top in a small bowl mix together one cup sugar three quarters of a cup of flour and one teaspoon of cinnamon mix that together until it's really well incorporated and then you're gonna add the melted butter and you're gonna kind of use the whisk to kind of cut that butter in and because it will start to kind of clump up and that's kind of what you want it to do. You kind of want it to create like a crumbly topping. Using your hands, sprinkle all of that topping over the apples. It will seem like a lot of topping, but you really want to cover the entire thing and make sure to use it all because this is what makes it so delicious. Now that my apple crisp is in the oven back here, I have it on there in there for 10 minutes to start at 450. I'll come back and I will turn the temperature down to 350 and cook it for another 30 minutes. So while that cooks, I'm gonna get started on the pumpkin snickerdoodle muffins. And I have my recipe printed out. I have never made this recipe before, so I'm kind of trying it out with you guys. So we'll just gonna have to do a taste test at the end to see how they turn out. So I am going to kind of gather my ingredients real quick and then I will show you everything that you guys will need if you wanna make this at home too. For the pumpkin snickerdoodle muffins, you will need one and three quarter cup of all-purpose flour, one cup of granulated sugar, one quarter cup of brown sugar, Sugar, one teaspoon each of cinnamon and baking soda, one half teaspoon of cream of tartar, and one half teaspoon of salt, an eighth teaspoon each of nutmeg, allspice, and ground cloves. You'll need two large eggs. You'll need one can of pumpkin puree, one tablespoon of vanilla extract,
extra, and then one half cup of butter melted. For your topping, you'll also need an additional one tablespoon of cinnamon and one third cup of granulated sugar. In a large bowl, mix together all of your dry ingredients. So you're gonna add your flour, your sugars, your spices, your salt, and your baking soda, and whisk it all around really well. In a four cup measuring bowl, add two eggs, your can of pureed pumpkin, your melted butter, and vanilla, and whisk that all around. And in one final small bowl, mix together your sugar and cinnamon. This will make the crumbly topping that you'll add on top of the muffins right before they go in the oven. Then you're gonna add your wet ingredients to your dry ingredients and stir it around until everything is completely combined, but don't overmix. Add muffin liners to your cupcake pans and then spray each one with some non-stick cooking spray. I like to use this really large cookie scoop to dip my muffin mix into the little containers. I feel like it makes all my muffins about the same size. Um, I got this from Pampered Chef. I will try to find a link and leave it down below. This batch ended up making about 19 or 20 muffins. The recipe said to put about a teaspoon of the cinnamon sugar mixture onto each muffin. I just kind of eyeballed it. The recipe says to put these muffins in a 375 degree oven for 23 to 27 minutes. I did 25 minutes and mine came out perfectly.
and baking can cause quite the mess. So here's a little bit of cleaning motivation for you if you are baking along with me to get over to the sink and get those dishes done. Take that five or 10 minutes and get it cleaned up. You'll feel so much better when it's done and you'll be able to enjoy your nice treats a lot more peacefully. Here are the muffins all done. I like to use the toothpick test to make sure that they're done in the middle. And these were perfectly done at 25 minutes. Okay, it's a few days later and now I'm going to make indoor s'mores. So I'm going to share with you first the ingredients that you will need and then we will walk through the very quick and easy steps to make these. There is no cooking involved. You don't have to use your oven. They are quick. They set up kind of like Rice Krispie treats, but without all of the stove top that you need to use. You just literally need a microwave and a couple of big bowls. So let's get started. You guys will need a box of Chex cereal. I really do prefer the rice checks for this, but I have corn checks on hand, so that's what I'm gonna use. You'll need corn syrup, vanilla, milk chocolate chips, not semi-sweet, milk chocolate, mini marshmallows, and then some unsalted butter. You'll also need a nine by 13 Pyrex pan, and then you'll also need a microwave safe bowl. In a really large bowl, add eight cups of the Chex cereal and then set that bowl aside. Using your stick of butter, really coat the Pyrex pan so that your bars don't stick. In a microwave safe bowl, add six cups of mini marshmallows, one and a half cups of milk chocolate chips. If you have a regular size bag, bag, you will just add the whole bag, five tablespoons of butter, one quarter cup of light corn syrup, and one teaspoon of vanilla. Just a little tip for you if you're using something that's sticky like corn syrup or honey, spray your measuring cup with a little bit of non-stick cooking spray before you add the substance to it and that will help it come out really easy. Microwave this mixture on high for one and a half minutes and then you're gonna take it out and stir it around. While you're doing that, Go ahead and get a spatula and butter it really well because this is a really sticky mess and the butter will help it not stick quite so bad. You'll see here that I'm mixing it all together. You wanna get it as well incorporated as you possibly can before you put it back in so that the stuff on the bottom can really get melted down as well. You're gonna add it back to the microwave for another minute and a half and then pull it back out and stir it around again. You'll kind of start to see that the chocolate will really mix in with the marshmallows and it should kind of darken up in the substance. And then once that has been really well incorporated and all of the marshmallows and chocolate seem to be really melted, you're gonna take that mixture and you're gonna dump it on top of the Chex cereal. And this is where it kind of gets a little bit tricky. This is a really hot bowl and it starts to harden really quickly. So just like Rice Krispie Treats, you kind of have to work quickly to get it all mixed together really well. Once it's all mixed together, you're gonna just add it in to your nine by 13 pan that has been really well buttered and press it down. And then you're gonna let it sit for one to two hours until it hardens up before you cut it into bars.
thank you so much for being here today. I hope that you guys got some recipe inspiration and maybe you guys will try out some of these recipes this fall. If you do, make sure to leave a comment down below what you guys think about these recipes. I would really love to hear that. If you like videos like this, hit that thumbs up button so I know to make more just like it. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos just like this. Plus, I make videos on organization, decluttering, simple living, and homemaking. So if you guys like that sort of thing, hit that subscribe button. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday. I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.